Okay, so this session is what are value streams? And we're gonna go into it really from the basis, the basics in starting. So one of the things about value streams, it gives us a picture of the whole, like an engine is important in a car, but you don't design the car around the engine. You left to look at the whole. Sometimes I feel like in the agile space, we've designed agile around the team. Not that team's not important. Of course it's important, but it's not really the whole aspect of it. So we need to shift from team agility to business agility. Team agility may be a requirement for business agility, but if you don't have business agility, you're definitely not gonna get things done quickly as an organization. And surprisingly, paying attention to business agility can help you get team agility. This is something surprising I saw. I say surprising because before I got into the engagement with it, I wouldn't have guessed it. But once I started looking at how I would engage at a large scale company, I realized, oh, if I can get the teams to understand how they work together, it'll be easier to teach them why they have to do iterative development. We're still having the tail wag the dog, so to speak. And a holistic view is needed. So this is part of what I'm trying to accomplish here. The starting at the team is no longer the best approach, even though it's kind of the scrum view we build up. Now, I'm not saying we start at the top and force it down. That's not necessarily the case either. I'm gonna actually suggest that we start with value streams in mind. Uh, not so much in this session, but this is the beginning of it. And uh, you know, even SAFE, a lot of people start with essential SAFE, which is the team level. Effective teams are only part of an organization. We have to go further than this. And sometimes that's a euphemism for virtually always. It's better to start with a different focus. Okay. So value stream management's got in vogue, and there are a lot of good reasons for it. It can increase collaboration, see where our blockages are, help identify the source of our problems, see our workflow, identify handbacks. That's where you know you give it to somebody and then they hand it back to you. Uh, get a general sense how much time it would take to do something if we focused on it. A lot of six month projects might've only taken one or two months if it wasn't interrupted by other work. If you've got a priority thing, maybe you should be letting the priority thing not be interrupted unless it doesn't slow them down. You wanna get a general sense how much time is being spent on the work since delays indicate bad task switching. So if you look at this and you see your task switching a lot, then you know that might cause efficiencies, loss of efficiency and wasted work. Focus on the work, not the people. That's important. Now this sounds funny, but this is important. See, I trust my people. I don't need to focus on them. I don't need to micromanage them. This is something that's been misunderstood in Lean. They talk about focusing on the ecosystem. That's because you can trust your people, but if your work, if your environment is messed up that they work in, they're gonna have a hard time. So we work on the, we focus on the work in the environment people are in because we can trust the people and the people together with management and executives can improve this. Very key shift from in Lean. That's, that's where that was first brought up, at least by my learning of it. Educate everyone on the importance of not exceeding the capacity of work of the people, the need to focus on finishing. Create a systems thinking perspective, it does help. Demonstrate why local optimization doesn't always result in global optimization and help create an understanding of all the people and resources required to get the value consumed. This sometimes referred to as full kitting, like a full kit comes from theory of constraints and is somewhat, well, it's not mentioned in a lot of places. Uh, anything based on, tame, on uh, theory of constraints like tame flow will have it. This is very important. Otherwise you get 80% done, everything's built, you can't get it out the door. I've even seen companies that release things and nobody knew it was out there. Hey, why are we, why are sales so bad? Oh, oh, I got it. It's not out on our website. Um, that's part of value delivery and people don't think about it because they're so focused on other things. So there are different aspects of it. You know, there's mapping, there's uh, with just to see where it's going or maybe to enumerate the delays or a generic value stream. This is a separate section, but at the end of this after this afternoon, it's a way to it's a way to see what's going on in a very short period of time. One thing I will say about my view of the value stream, in fact, my whole view of Amplio in some sense, uh, it really comes from a external consultant's perspective or an internal change agent's perspective. And the reason I mention this is when you're embedded, even as an internal change agent, you, you really have to pay attention to how much time you have. As a consultant, it's really something else. Like I've got maybe four days and that's it. 
I got to make change quick or I got to see what's going on quick. So they'll bring me back to help them with the change. If you're embedded, maybe you got a little flexibility, but I know a lot of embedded change agents are really good and they don't have the time they'd like. You know, if, if you're outside thinking, oh, it'd be nice if I was inside the consultant and inside the company and they'd listen to me. Let me tell you, it doesn't work that way. Uh, I knew Ward Cunningham once and uh, we he used to live in Seattle. Now I, th I think he's down in Portland. But I would talk to him once. We had a mutual client where he was there all the time. I was just coming in for a few days. And I said, boy, it must be great to be like almost full time with a company. So they listen to you. And he just chuckled and said, oh, they don't listen to me. They just pay me. <laughs> and I think that's why he stopped working there. But time is important. And that's the perspective here. How do I do things quicker? Because it's important. I'm not going to do this fourth one, but I've used things called Cafe Conversations. You can check it out, just cafeconversation.org. It's a great way to get people to talk about things. That's another way to do it. Okay, so let's get into the, the real meat of what value streams are. So most organizations are, are uh, you know, most organizations are hierarchical in nature. And actually there's nothing wrong with hierarchies. It's a question of how you do your work with the hierarchies. So this is just an example, marketing portfolio, whatever. Um, and what's what's interesting though to note is that we start our work and then we hand off. This is like the classic waterfall. We batch it together, hand it off each one, each uh, after each step. The idea is how do we be efficient in each one of these? Because these people are managing the efficiency and effectiveness and productivity of their people. And you hand it off. Supposedly, you can because you know what you're doing. And second of all, well, you not only know what you could do, you could predict what you're doing. That's what I meant. Because you might know what you're doing and not be able to predict. In fact, because you know what you're doing, you might know you can't predict. Uh, and and what you've got is is that you hand it off once. But notice this actually encourages big batches because it's then more efficient, more effective. I can manage people easier. But it also causes delays in feedback because I... Even if I hand it off and I get feedback later, these are big batches. It takes a long time. And this causes waste and too much work in process. That's what WIP is. You see that work in process. Okay. Uh, some people call this work in progress because it, uh, the technical definition from what I understand might have been that. But process is more accurate because it means it's in play, but you may not be progressing. Um, and a lot of the people I actually uh, respect a lot, like Don Reinerts and uh, Klaus Leopold, they use process too. So I'm glad I get a little agreement, but I'd do it even if they didn't agree. Uh, but there is a lot, and it's because it's it makes clear that this is just in process, even if it's not moving forward. So hierarchically, managers typically check their people. You'd think this, are they properly utilized? Are they being productive? Are they doing quality work? Are they working on the right things? I mean, what else would they be doing? <laughs> you know, it's like, of course. So when you look at this, it's like, well, of course. But notice that this is already an example of how the system we're in affects how we manage and how we think. Because this isn't quite right, which we'll find out pretty soon. So this focus on being efficient at each step and ending off once. Again, what happens if a mistake happens here, but it's not discovered there? That means all this work's being done under misunderstandings. We're just wasting a lot of time. We're creating extra work. So how can we speed things up? And this is a misnomer actually, because we don't wanna speed up the work, but what if we worked on small items of highest value? Okay, so we really wanna speed, not the work up. I did ask that question, but it's kind of intentionally provocative. What we wanna do is speed up the start to the end, the timing, basically go quicker overall, not speed up any individual piece. Only select when we have the capacity so it doesn't get stopped. And we have to also attend to the transaction cost. You know, continuous CICD is not necessarily the right way to do it when there are heavy transaction costs. And there sometimes are. And maybe you want to eliminate those transaction costs so you can do CICD, but there is a transaction cost. And sometimes the transaction cost is not to you, but it's to the customer. So, and then maybe you can affect that too, but it's something to at least attend to. So, what we want to do is look at the nature of our work. And the nature of our work is that it cuts across the organization. You know, it comes in, we might ask management or somebody, hey, do we do this? And it cuts across into the development group. And we, of course, don't have one thing in this linear way. There are lots of things going on. That whole bottom bar would be green if I showed everything, of course. And then, of course, we get to market. So 
this is the value stream. This something comes in for it's for the customer, but it may be coming in from somewhere else on the on behalf of the customer. So we want to focus on this, but um, we start value stream. We start with the customer in mind, and when they consume the value, it's not concept to cash. It's concept when it's consumed and cash, we, both cash and consumption actually. What we want to do is notice this is a problem. We are organized this way, but our value flows this way, and people typically aren't managing the flow of value. This is a real problem in most organizations. We have to shift from hierarchical. Remember, we talked about this. The value stream perspective tells us they should manage time to market, ecosystem visibility, effects of upstream groups on their teams, effects of their teams on downstream groups. It's a whole thing. It's very important. A focus on keeping people busy just does all this bad stuff, which we see. This is no news. Again, we focus on people. We're going to keep them busy. We focus on the work. We're going to figure out how to make it smoother and better, how to improve the ecosystem. What we focus on is what we get. But now here's another thing to notice. How often does work wait? See, that's almost a funny question. People say, well, my people are busy. Oh, wait a minute. I didn't say people. How often is the work waiting? See, if you're working on something and then somebody interrupts you and you go to work on something else and that work you had been working on is now waiting. It's waiting for you to get back. By the way, if somebody interrupts you and you say, hey, I'll get back to you an hour, it's waiting for them. Their work is waiting for an hour until you get with them. Then you get with them and then they come back and they interrupt you. It's, it goes back and forth and back and forth. This is a real problem. And what we want to do is, as I mentioned this before, is waiting most of the time. In fact, an astronomical large number of time, amount of time. One advantage of doing value stream mapping where you actually get numbers is you can, the shock value is amazing. Um, many companies are, it's the work is waiting 85 to 95% of the time. Now, just think about that. That might sound awesome, uh, astronomical, but let's say you're working on five things at once and a lot of people are then on average, you're going to be waiting 80%, not you, the work. This is, again, why looking at people isn't actually good because they're busy. They're frenetic. The amount of multitasking they're doing gives you an indication. But, oh, wow, look how great we're doing. It's all busy. Yeah, you're busy. They're busy. But where's the work? It's waiting. So we need to shift our time to this. And most people would have no clue because nobody's managing this. And... Notice as well that this puts people doing their job in a situation where they have no real control because they're waiting for other people. So people are waiting while they're working. People are waiting while they're working. That's a problem. That's called multitasking. Okay. So we need to shift from managing people and managing the workflow, trying to speed up people to eliminating delays in the workflow and working on local optimizations to attending the workflow. I didn't point this out, but it should have been clear that anywhere in the pipeline, anywhere in the value stream, you're delayed, delays everything, okay? So the flow lean theory constraints, using them represents a shift from this to this, and this is really what's critical. So the approach is not to speed up the work, but to eliminate the delays between the steps and the subsequent sessions. Uh, the ones we recommend you watch after this there, that is described. Okay, so a quick review, and then we're gonna stop the recording here. We need to focus on value streams, not hierarchies. The more we overload value streams, the more work is created. It's not useful work. It's really waste. Slows down business delivery and overloads people. Tends to reduce innovation. Uh, this is one of the crazy things to me. People are talking about, oh, we don't want to become mechanical. We don't want to focus on the workflow. We want to innovate. And I'm saying it is hard to innovate when it's crazy, when it's frenetic. You need some calmness. You need some efficiency. If you have a good process, you can innovate, and that's what you need to do. Because see, the process, I would contend, the degree of complexity of your work is different than the degree of complexity of building your product. So yeah, we know building product is kind of takes innovation and has a lot of complexity, but your work shouldn't be that way. And by calming one side down, you do the other side better. We must shift from attending to the workers to the work itself.